Breaking the cycle to step forward. Authentic conversations from lived experience and a professional perspective in overcoming abuse with Chris Tuck and Beverly Ann. Hello and welcome to Breaking the Cycle to Step Forward podcast. I'm Beverly Ann and I'm joined by my lovely co-host. Hi everyone, Chris here. So this is episode 49 and the title actually is Are You Judgmental? Which Mm. is very interesting and we've got plenty that we want to discuss about this. And one of the things when we're talking about judgment, I was saying how judgment is a basic need for instinct, for survival. Um, You know, am I safe? And we'll go into that a lot more. But Chris, do you want to give the official meaning of judgment? Yeah, so many people think being judgmental is a negative thing. But when you look at the actual definition, it's the ability to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions. Now, that to me is very positive. Yet, when we say, oh, you're very judgmental, that's a negative connotation. So that in itself is, um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. So I like to see where this conversation's going today. And I can hear you've got a bit of a sore throat. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be gentle with you today. (laughs) Not that we're not normally anyway. Um, Yes, I, I do think I very much agree with you about how the word judgment or judgmental can be con- perceived in two very different ways. Yeah. And I remember um, doing a video for the letter J, which was judgment, for a survivor's video many years ago when we went to Manchester to see the launch of that film. Do you remember? Yeah, 100%. And for me, what it brought up was, yes, about the survival, because, you know, as a very young child, you know, who's going through any adverse childhood experiences, any trauma, so abuse, where they feel that they're going to be in a place of safety or if it, not safety, in a place of fear, mm-hmm. um, you know, is someone going to react? Are they walking on eggshells? Um Is someone about to approach me because you're being sexually abused, physically abused, also emotionally abused? Is that person going to be switching soon? So, like, you can be in a very happy scenario, but then that person turns on a sixpence, as they say. Um, So you learn to judge, don't you, really instinctively. And yet, when we speak about judging people, it has another connotation as well within, you know, um, and I'm saying within the wide arena of media, and I'm not blaming the media here. I'm just saying it's how we all do it. And, you know, and we do it through, look at the platforms that we look at, Instagram, Facebook, X, you know, all of those. So what are your thoughts, Chris? So it's the stereotypes, isn't it, that we've got to be very careful of um, when it comes to this word judgment, Um, because every human being, we should be judging them on their own merits, really. We shouldn't be judging them on their stereotypes. But when you come from a place, as you said, Bev, um, where you are literally living day to day for survival, you will judge based on stereotypes, based on what you were told when you were growing up, based on what you've experienced as you've grown up, based on what you've seen, yeah? So those stereotypes, as adults, we can sort of like look at them and go, actually, that's not true. Let's base it on the individual that comes into our space. But when you're a child and you're told what you're told, you see what you see, um, then judging on stereotypes um is probably normal and that goes across the whole of society so whether you are a religious person um and then you look towards people that are not religious you're being told certain things 
when you are a certain socioeconomic group and you're um, looking up at maybe someone that's got lots of money, you're told certain things, yeah? And unless you've got something different to what you've been told and what you've experienced, you're not going to know different. So I just want to bring all of that into the mix as well. So when you've got the education and the knowledge and you feel safe, you can often, okay, you might have in the back of your head or subconsciously, you might have those stereotypes going around, but you meet the individual and then you decipher for yourself on your own judgment of that person of how they turn up, how they treat you, how they interact with you and how they come into your space and respect your space. So it doesn't matter what background they come from, ethnicity, religion, whatever, you're able to do that yourself if you've got the skill set to do that. Because if you know no different, and I'm not making any excuses here, I'm just trying to, you know, get out what I'm thinking. If you know no different and then um, you come across someone that you don't feel safe around, you will hopefully go back on your, um, you know, that inner feeling of does this person make me safe or not? And then you will act accordingly. But when you know different and feel different, then you can do different, can't you? Absolutely. And what you're coming on to is about the triggers. So judgment for me is actually a trigger. And I didn't really fully understand that until this week. And it's something that's been on my mind for a long, long time because, you know, this podcast is about being authentic. It's about being honest. You know, I'm nearly 30 years in my recovery when I think about it. So when I say recovery, you know, I first started to get my first help and support when I was in, when I was 30, just coming up to 30. And yes, I'm coming up to 60 this year. And everything we learn is in layers and in different depths. But this week, the straw broke the camel's back. What happened? Lots of different things. And I won't bore people with all the different things. But yeah, we have very different we have busy diaries and that we manage. And in that managing of diaries, we also manage our self-care. I know I always put my self-care in yeah. and that's important. And I'm also studying. So it's the little things that were taking my energy. And I felt like I wasn't achieving, not achieving to say I've done it, but there were things I needed to do so that I can accomplish them but one of the things that triggered me was knowing that I'm going to get a, a, a visit into the house now that trigger was the judgment trigger if it's not yeah. if it's not clean you know and to a high standard as well so it's the judgment of who I am so you're having a house inspection so yes. just explain a little bit because that was all very cryptic. Okay. You're having a, you're having a house inspection. A house yeah? inspection, so yes. So because of that, even though your place is clean and lovely, you felt this additional pressure to be beyond perfect. Yes. And, and that, oh, that is, so I didn't realise at the time, but a house inspection, they just wanted to come in, check a few things. But for me, yeah. it wasn't yeah. just about that. It was like, no. ooh it's that minute thing it's that yeah. micro what if they look at my window sills and see that there's a bit of mold there because it's been raining so much how will they judge me and it it did it tipped me over it was a huge yeah. trigger, trigger. Mm -hmm. and then I realized hold on hold on it's not about them judging it's about you judging as well because if I wasn't judging myself to my high standards yeah then I would have thought yeah come in it's tidy yeah. it's clean yeah come in welcome yeah I'll show this but obviously it was me feeling at that time that I was judging myself so much harshly yeah harshly and that was my trigger it sent me over and I also realized that's where like when I go to say a dentist 
you know, I've got some, I've had some lovely experiences, but I've had some really awful ones. And that's for me, um, when I, I judge people, I look for the reaction on their face. How, what's the tone of their voice? You know, you can ask me anything, but there's a different way you say it. And even when I'm having arguments with my husband, you know, we can discuss things and not have a problem. But if he says something that that I realise now can be taken as a bit, I'm taken as judgmental. He's questioning me. Mm -hmm. He may not be, but I take it that he's questioning my integrity or you know or any of my Something values deeper and more profound isn't it yeah yeah but his question may not be deep or no. profound but it's how I'm taking it and I yeah and I think that's really important for us because where that comes to is we can see that you know I've been reading an article this week and I don't know have you watched the BBC um program yet with um Earl Spencer his interview yes now let's be frank here he comes from a social standing yeah that you upper class yeah privileged yeah no worries no everything they can care of yes stereotype absolutely and he's broken some of that stereotype however i couldn't help it as i was watching him i was really I was actually really touched and yeah, I, was I was really proud yeah. the way he was able to say, you know what, I am part of this network, but I want to speak out. I don't, I want to break the cycle of this. And it was, he was fearless. Yes. He was also, also very honest about the impact of releasing all that trauma and the support that he's had to have. But I just thought, wow, how brave, because we're all open to judgment from other people, and we're going to speak about some of that judgment in a minute. Um, but I just thought how wonderful that he's stepped up as a father as well of seven children um, and s released some of that judgment is the only way to say it but he's opened himself up to judgment from people that will make judgments as well well as we said it's human nature to judge others for all amount of different reasons right but it's that judgment of ourselves that I want to go back to and pick up with what you were saying Bev so it's our perceived expectations of others on us so where it's our perception as to what others are thinking about us that puts that added pressure and layers on us and it then has a corresponding impact on us. So I just want to pick up about you having to ha tidy your house for that inspection. When my kids were small and you, you know you have those mum and baby groups, it was my turn to host. And round here where I live, it, it's quite affluent as in, you know, everybody else in the mothers and babies group, they all had detached homes, all lovely, all nicely done. Mine was a two bedroom before the extension, really sort of quite run down and really not very pretty looking. But it was my turn. And oh, my God, the judgment and the pressure that I put on myself like you, I, I, I had a newborn baby. I was cleaning the windows. I was scrubbing the um, skirting boards. I de-weeded the drive outside. I washed my car. I cleaned the toilet. I, I did absolutely everything. And by the time these people turned up for a cup of tea and coffee, I was knackered, right? And I'm sitting there thinking, they're going to really run me down. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. But they could not have been any different. And they were, the first thing they turned around and said to me was, wow, your house is tidy. And I'm like, I'm going to tell you all the truth. I've been cleaning this for over a week to get it to a standard <laughs> where you guys would not judge me. And they went, but we would never do that. <laughs> so we've got all of this going on in our own heads, but it doesn't help when you've had those adverse childhood experiences or any other experiences and the stereotypes that I had in my head of 
these more privileged mums have got all of their SHIT together and I haven't. I haven't got what they've got. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. So I've got to show it in a different way. And we've got to stop that inner critical voice. And like you said, being more self-aware of what our triggers are and actually going, you know what? Now I'm going to have an honest conversation about all of this. So, you know, when you come round, first thing I said was, I've not tidied my house. And you're like, well, it doesn't matter. And I'm like, yeah, but it does. But the fact that I know you and it doesn't matter. I came to see I, you, not I, your house. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, you know, when someone comes around for the first time, it almost feels like everything's got to be right. Otherwise, the judgment is there. And I think that's where that comes from, it, it, you know, and even from a lot of people, it is it is that fear. Let's be honest, fear is always in it. But growing up, you know, I grew up in an environment, you know, in school, you don't want to be, you know, I don't know about now, but me growing up, you know, if you did really well, that'd be read out at school, you know, well done, you know, here are the top four people of this assignment. In our maths class, we don't and didn't only have the top table, we had the bottom table. Yeah. And ironically, and even now, when it comes to fractions, yeah, and yep. some percentages, I would be on that bottom table. Ironically, when it came to things like um logarithms and pi, I'd be on the top table. I mean, so transverse, unbelievable, but I still do you know what? Even today, I still remember that feeling mm. of me with fractions being on that bottom table. Yeah. And I just go blank with fractions. Yeah. Yeah. I just go blank. So that's the same with judgment because it that's all encompassing and it's still there. And it doesn't matter how much work you do. I remember that. Oh, yeah, I've done that. I've dealt with that. I don't need to do that anymore. Actually, you have done that and you have dealt with that. But there comes another layer. It becomes easier because then you learn to laugh. You know, I was in such a tiz. Yeah. I I actually verbalised to my husband how I was feeling and he mm -hmm. was he wanted to fix it. And I went, no, don't fix it. I'm actually telling you in my vulnerability how I feel. Yeah. And I had tears in my eyes. Aww. He was like, who is this person? <laughs> this isn't who she is. She's gone mad. <laughs> And I said, all I want to do is run away. And well, actually, that's, that's that's the other side of it, isn't it? And actually, then it made me think, what do I need? Mm -hmm. And we were meant to be recording this podcast. And I just messaged you and said, can we move it? Yeah. Simple. And you said, yes. And I took myself yep. out for an hour. And I did just run away for an hour. And what a difference. Yeah. What a difference. So anyone listening, because this is what we want people to do is, you know, just have a think to yourself when you're being triggered and you're worried about who's judging you because often, you know, like when they say when we point their finger, you know, I'm worried you're judging me, you know, you can have that conversation, but look at the three fingers pointing back because who's judging themselves? Because when, we when we're not judging ourselves, we don't care. It's water mm -hmm. for ducks back. But it's when yeah. I feel, you know, when I'm in that place and I'm judging myself. Yeah. Mm, very interesting, this conversation. But, you know, just generally in society, though, these stereotypes and the judgments that we all do make, because we all do, we're human, yeah. that's what we do, um, they can lead to victim blaming. And that's when I've got an issue with that. And that is when we really do need to go, you know what? we shouldn't be judging a certain cohort of people for a certain reason. And why are we doing that? Is it still true? What is true about that? What isn't? And then we need to be brave enough to have the conversations to change those judgments and those stereotypes to move it forwards and move it on. Yeah. And, and we see a lot of that in abuse. Yeah. You know, let's take domestic violence. You know, yeah. that. That's one category. And we hear it time and time again. Why do they still stay with their partner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, there were lots of different reasons. And what's particularly hard is if someone's come to you and trusted you that their partner, mm -hmm. and the reason why I'm saying partner, because it's no, you know, we were led to believe years ago it was only women that were abused by their husbands. And yes, there was a large It is a portion. gendered crime, we know that, yeah. yeah. But... However, it is both, but also in same-sex relationships it happens. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to use the term partner because I think that's, the, you know, that's important. And when yeah. somebody comes to you and speaks to you about their relationship. Now, there's always a time, it doesn't matter how much you love someone, it doesn't matter how um, healthy the relationship is. There are times you don't agree with each other. There are times you're tired and, you know, you don't like things. But then there's a line you know, between what's normal and actually that that's abusive. Now, I've been in that situation and I didn't tell anyone for a long time. Yeah. I didn't tell anyone and I still haven't said too much about certain things. Um, but when I did speak to somebody that, you know, and when people come to me, we then feel that we want to try and fix something. Mm hmm but often it takes time for people to be able to really look at where they are, understand that they're in a relationship they don't want to be in and it's not healthy, but also it takes time for them to think, what options do I have? Yeah. So for some people, they're able to go, this isn't working, this is abusive, mm -hmm. I can see that now. There are lots of little things leading up to it. It's abusive, I want out of this relationship. And the fortunate people can step away. Doesn't mean to say it's over for them, but they have the choices there and then. But for some people, they don't have that choice at that time for lots of different reasons. And it's then they tend to become more harshly judged. Now, sometimes that's out of because you want the best for that person. Why haven't they left that person? They've done this, this. It. How much more evidence do they need? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and and I can understand where that comes from. We've all done that, you know, especially yeah, when have. it's someone that we really care for. Yeah. But it's important to understand that, you know, in this case, judging doesn't help. In fact, it hinders. So it's a, about being able to be really aware of where your judgment, is it a healthy judgment or is it hindering? Is it unhealthy? And I hear you, but I still do feel that there's two sides to the conversation here. So, for example, my mum, DV relationship with my stepdad, and she's already been in a DV relationship. She left that first dad, um, my biological dad, so she was able to do it then, okay? She got into this second relationship and it was clearly... DV spoke to her so many times about it said to her I can give you your freedom we can get you a flat we'll pay the rent we'll get you sorted you'll have all your kids back in your life etc 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 and she always always refused my help and um, yet she was determined to stay in the relationship I don't understand why I, I don't Bev because um, I asked her outright so many times um, and and showed her that I could help her um, and then one thing she said to me and I've shared this before she turned around and said we deserve each other so I don't know whether by that time she'd already in her brain decided that she'd caused so much harm to her children that she actually deserved what was being dished out to her now I don't agree with that I don't agree that anyone should be abused yeah I, I that we've got that as a foundation yes. no one deserves to be abused um but when you're fighting or offering someone an out and they in their brain are telling themselves that they deserve and that they better the devil they know than the devil they don't and they can't see a life outside of that you can't really change that and if it's going to make you ill by being in that scenario because there's only so much help and support you can keep offering, then you need to make the decision to stand back from that and just let them carry on with their lives and you carry on with yours because it's not healthy. 
absolutely so I just want to restate that because there's going to be many people let's take a friendship for example if you was in a dv relationship right now i would be saying to you you're not oh, i just want to make that clear but i would be <laughs> saying to you come on beb like you know we know the signs we know this we know that i can help you and if you didn't take my advice help and support I would feel very, very frustrated and I would have to make the decision just to be there for when you came to me in the future or stand back and go, you know what, I can't be part of this because I'm also, I'm almost playing a part of a role here. I'm being part of it. So it's not black and white. It's very complicated. Yeah. Absolutely. What I'm trying to say. Absolutely. And that's what judgment is about. It's about making a judgment. Yeah. Is this the right place? Is you know, is this decision right for me? Because yeah. if you do need to step away from a person because you don't want to be condoning it, you don't want to be enabling yeah. it, you know, there are ways that you can do that and you can offer, you can say, as you said, when you're ready, you know I'm here. Yeah. But in the meantime, if you want some further support, this is there. Yeah. Yeah. give it and then know that you've done the best and then you make agreement you know if you see them you do what's right for both parties because you can't it comes down to worthiness as well and I remember being in a relationship years and years ago and knowing that it wasn't healthy at the time having young children however I remember the this is as good as it gets because it was a hell of a lot better than what I'd grown up with. And and at that time, this is as good as it gets. So saddens me to hear me ah, to hear you say that. Absolutely. And you know, and you know, it's still an area like, where was where did that come from? But I truly believe that at the time. And that's why yeah. anyone listening, if you're in a relationship and it's not good for you, you know, it's not healthy. Or even if you're not sure, because let's be honest, what do we know? I used to do all those questionnaires in the magazines. Yeah, I remember you saying. <laughs> you, know, you know, but go on, go on to a, a, any of the websites, Survivors Trust, and we're going to have Survivors Trust come on as well. You know, um, it helps you to understand about what's abusive. So we don't want to go off track. We are talking about judgment, judgment but yeah. judgment is important. We need yeah. that for survival to keep safe. Yeah, yeah. But also, are we when we do anything too much, it does have a negative side to it as well. Yeah, we shouldn't be tarring everybody with the same brush, basically, is what I'm taking from this judgment conversation, yeah. is that we should see people as individual human beings and take them on their own merits. Yeah. Yeah. But we do tend to, especially in the media and as a society, depending on where we grow up and how we've grown up, we do tend to stereotype certain sectors of society, yeah. sections of society, whatever. But that is, we all do that, no matter who Absolutely. we are. Yeah. Um, is it right? Is it wrong? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah. And the biggest judgment judges of, of ourselves is us. Yeah, 100%, yeah. So my so, take home for this podcast is just to say, if you feel you're being judged by someone, just have a little look at yourself and see where you are. Yes. And and if it's that they are judging you and you actually think, no, I've done this, I've done that, then you know what, sometimes you have to let them go as well. Yeah, 100%. I, th I think judgment's a good thing from a self-critiquing point of view, as long as you don't hit yourself over the head all of the time with it. Because I think if something's really bothering you, as you said, it is a chance to self-reflect and go, well, actually, is there any truth in this judgment about me, about what I've done, who I am? What, what is it that's being judged? Um, and why is it being judged? Um, and as you just said, is it is there truth to it or not? And if there is a bit of truth to it and you don't like it and it's impacted you, you've got an opportunity to change that, yeah? But if there is, from your perception, nothing to be judged for, you're like, okay, God, you're gone, mate. You're gone, <laughs> you know? 
Absolutely. I'm quite happy with who I am, what I'm doing, whatever. Um, so I I think we just need to, yes, have it. Judgment is there for everybody, as you we've all explained across this podcast. But don't use it to beat yourself up, and don't use it to um judge everybody by the same the same standards, whatever it is the judgment is. Absolutely. So what we'll do is in the, if you're listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, we will put a link to the video that I mentioned, J is for Judgment, that was recorded several years ago now for the film to help other survivor, victim survivors. If anyone's got any questions or you want us to talk about any specific topic, please email us on breaking the cycle two step forward at gmail.com. And thank you very much once again for listening. And it's lovely to hear that your voice made it through this podcast, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will. Um, but yeah, so everybody just take care and um, let us know any questions, any suggestions for future podcasts. There was one from Pauline on one of on our last podcast which was really interesting which we need to follow up and there's some been some other really good comments so keep them coming and if you want to be a guest get in uh get in touch with us on the email that Bev's just uh read out bye from me everyone bye bye <laughs>